Our next guest, by the way, is the new executive director of the Apollo Theater, Mary Cummings. She joins us via telephone. Mary, good morning. You're on with Rob and Matt and John. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you. When did you get the gig? Well, January 2nd. January 2nd of this year. Who was the previous executive director of the Apollo? I know a lot of people at the Apollo, but I never necessarily paid attention to the titles. Well, Michael Knoll has been kind of, uh, quote, unquote, the jack of all trades yeah. at the Apollo. He's been keeping it going and thriving for, goodness, over 40 years, I believe, mm -hmm. and has really been the heart and soul of the Apollo Civic Theater in Martinsburg. And um, he is beloved and respected by many of the members in our community. And he's still involved. He just He's just decided to step back a little bit and let someone else deal with the day-to-day -day activities. And I was happy to oblige, so to speak. Well, very nice. Congratulations. We, of course, talked with Michael many, many times on the program. And I kind of knew him as the guy who was involved in everything, but... Uh, Never identified him as the executive director there. So, well, it's great to have you, Mary. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to be interested in this position. Well, um, I am originally from Garrett County, also known as the the, the cold, freezing north of De Maryland. Yeah, Deep Creek Lake, and baby. Yeah, yeah, where we define cold. Um, and so I grew up there, have lived there all of my life, and um, was very passionate about the performing arts, gee whiz, probably from the time I was in high school. So I was affiliated with the Garrett Lakes Arts Festival through the 80s and 90s, and then became the director of their education, and then the board chair, and then the executive director. And Garrett County was the last county in Maryland to get a performing arts center at Garrett College, and I was also the executive director of the performing arts center um, at Garrett College. So um, I recently uh, met and married the love of my life, Tom Cummings, who is a local here in, in Berkeley County, and we decided to move south, quote unquote. I was ready to get out of the cold weather and to enjoy the wonderful, beautiful weather here in Berkeley County. So I wanted to stay in the arts because I've always just been so passionate about the performing arts and really the necessity it has in our lives to make our, our world more colorful, so to speak. Well, you come highly recommended. Gula Angle couldn't say enough great things about you. And Mayor Kevin Knowles just texted me and said you are a five-star recruit for the Apollo <laughs> Uh, thrilled to get you. So uh, you come with uh, a lot of folks who have uh, very high opinions of you, Mary. Well, it's easy. You know, you never go to work if you love what you're doing, right? Every day is just doing what you love. And I'm super excited about carrying my personal passion to the folks in Berkeley County and seeing what I can do to um, continue the mission of the Apollo to thrive and to present quality performances to our community and i love this community oh my goodness it's 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 a small town feeling everybody has been so gracious and kind and it's almost like i never left home well very nice uh mary and uh you obviously you take over a place that a lot of people in this community hold very dear in their heart and maybe you could tell us what some of your grand plans are for the apollo going forward I would love to see um, more community participation. I'd love to get to know the people in the community and to find out what they would like to see the Apollo do, what they would like to see um, the Apollo present to their community. How can the Apollo be more than what it has been, you know, kind of build on the success of the past? So that is probably my number one mission is to talk to folks to have some maybe town hall meetings and get to know people better. Um, I have been delighted to attend the chamber functions and rotary meetings and just to see how beloved the Apollo is in this community. So my number one mission here is to see what I can do to help the Apollo thrive and grow and 
make this a destination, right? We're in a great location, and how can the Apollo help with the economic development of this area so that people, when they're coming through from point A to point B, stop and say, oh, this is a cool place. You know, I want to stay here. I want to see a show. I want to grab a meal. I want to, you know, ride on the CNO Canal, whatever it is, but that we embellish, if that's the right word, the many assets that are already here in this community. The Weinberg in Frederick, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not, but it is very much an old-style theater uh, like the Apollo. Uh, but it seems to me to be utilized more than than the Apollo. Uh, is your idea to get more dates in there, more programs, more shows, more reasons for people to keep coming to the Apollo? I'm very familiar with the Weinberg um, being in the performing arts in Maryland for the last 20 years. Um, I've had lots of opportunities to be there and to talk to those folks. And yeah, I think, I think the Weinberg is a good example of showcasing um, Frederick. And I, I would like to do the same thing with the Apollo. I think, yes, we would like to have more, more. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's not, but I think, its main mission is to be responsive to the community. What does the community want? Um, I, I did meet with some of the folks at the um, convention and bureau, visitors bureau, excuse me, and I'd like to be a partner with them to find out how can we serve the community. So I don't have specifically, you know, how many shows or how many activities, but really want to get Again, the feel of the community. What does the community want to be? Um, I've had some folks tell me that that was a great place to have um, um, fundraisers and parties. And I know a Halloween is a great event. And so I'm just here to do whatever I can do to, to continue the success. Uh, good morning, uh, Mary, and congratulations on the new job. This is John Gilstrap. Um, I've been in the entertainment business for a quarter of a century on the, on the writing side of things. I would love to see, I mean, not to um, run your business for you, I, I think what, what the world needs actually, and this area is, has kind of got a good start on with CATF and some of the stuff at the uh, uh, Opera House down in, in Charlestown, I would love to see a venue where young playwrights, new playwrights, uh, or established play, playwrights with, with new material can kind of workshop their stuff the way it's done off off Broadway and and such. I don't know what the costs of that sort of thing are, but I tell you, I think there's a huge there's there's a desire for that for live theater, and the outlets are so limited, and the thought of going in and you know and dropping two hundred bucks to um, to go to the uh, Kennedy Center plus the travel time plus the three hours in the parking lot to get out. Um, I just think there's a tremendous opportunity to turn not just the Apollo, but by extension to the Opera House and, and to other areas, uh, other um, and, and the CATF. I think there's a great opportunity to turn this area into kind of a theater centric place. That's a great idea. Um, in my previous role, we've had some opportunity to do that. And there again, um, one of the, the networking meetings I had when I was affiliated with the Maryland State Arts Council was that that a group in New York City did that very same thing. And they involved the community. Right. So they would bring the playwright in and they would have, you know, conversations at church groups, at civic organizations with the playwright about what's what's going on with why they wrote that play. And then so so getting the community to feel part of that experience. But you're absolutely right. I that's what the Apollo has been. I would love to see more of that. And I think the one thing I'm excited about is there's so much, there's so many more resources here than I'm used to. Um, in Garrett County, it's, it's, it's a three hour drive in any direction to get anything here. It's, it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to a plethora of talent. So yes, I think that that's a great way to get the community involved because you can have talkbacks, you can have, you know, theater in the rounds, you can make the audience feel like they're part of the performance, getting to know the actors, getting to know the playwrights. So that's definitely part of what I have seen the Apollo do in the past and definitely something I wouldn't want to change but only encourage. Are you also the artistic director? No. Um, we have uh, different artistic directors for performances. 
I haven't met with the staff yet. I'm really looking forward to that in the next week to see what their vision and their goals are. But Michael's done a great job of working with local talent and in the artistic director role. So I have not met with those folks. Like I said, I'm, what, 15 days on the job yet. (laughs) I just haven't gotten around to that. But um, I do think that working with the CATF, um, I've worked with those folks before. Um, I've come down to Berkeley County in my, from Garrett County because of the talent. And I do think that there's a lot of opportunity to partner with other surrounding organizations. You know, so that's, that's what the arts are really about is partnership and networking. How can we all work together to serve our community? What do you see is the big Matt Harvey about oh, that? Yes, yes. Good morning, Mary, and and I'll echo John. Congratulations, uh, welcome, welcome to the South. I guess That's <laughs> from Garrett County to to Berkeley County, but at least what, lower ground anyway. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Eighty one's usually more clear than sixty eight. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the you know either the Apollo Theater or or local theater in general? I think the arts have been really hit hard, um, especially with with COVID. We're we're trying to rediscover what the new norm is. So I think that um, does that that's does that mean like getting people to come back out and watch plays? Getting people to come back out and to feel comfortable, and their their buying tendencies are different. Um, they're waiting to the last minute. So I've seen, um, and also. I think the arts always have to be growing and evolving. So they're, again, networking with other organizations to see what their trends, industry trends are. Um, I see that as the biggest challenge. Also, I'm sure you all know we're um, committed to renovation at the Apollo. Yes. And so that, that's probably a big, a big challenge. But there again, it always goes back to the community and how the community sees the theater. I think this is really great input that this community wants theater and wants local talent and local playwrights. How exciting is that? That's super. um, I grew up in Garrett County, as I've said, and we had a little venue called the Blue Barn and a group of New York City actors would come down and do this very thing. It was a fun thing to do in the summer to go to this barn and see theater in the round. And it was part of my um, maturation, as it were, in the arts to have access to this high quality of theater. At I, That's where we went on dates <laughs> to this. You know, but we we were stuck in Garrett County, New York City is a solid four hours away, but yet we were exposed to quality performances. You know, e- Europe has this down well. I'm I'm a classical music nerd, and we were in Austria and in, in Vienna, and I scored tickets to the Staats Opera to see La Boheme, and Ooh. we have, oh it was great, and um, <laughs> you know this beautiful old opera house and, and what have you, and of course we were. We did not have the cheap seats. We, were, we had beautiful seats, but there's over a hundred people that that pay two euros to go and watch the opera. They're in the cheap seats in the back, but it's a way to keep the the tradition of opera alive in Vienna and and throughout Europe. And I think one of the issues that has happened in America with the uh, with the live performing arts is everything is so expensive and. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that, but community theater, and I mean good community theater, doesn't have to be, a, you know, a hundred dollar ticket. It, it can be right. a twenty five dollar ticket for adults and a, a five dollar ticket for kids if you want to fill the house. And I, I just think that there's a crisis of an imagination when it comes to uh, filling live theater. So I really, I, 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 God bless you for the work you do, and I hope you have a lot of success. Sounds like John just volunteered to be a board member as well. I'd be happy to be a board member. (laughs) Well, and, and, you know, the thing, before this role, I was in human resources, so I was hiring folks. And, you know, you always try to find what motivates an employee to get out of bed in the morning. And I have to tell you, the thing that's always motivated me in this job is how it can impact the lives of children. Um, I took a busload of high school theater students to see a semi-opera performance of Carmen at the Maryland Theater. 
and I seeing the, the the actors come out on stage and talk to the students and to see the the look in their eyes to be able to have a one on one conversation that's life changing, right? You know, and so I think that accessibility, bringing the arts to our community is so important. I don't know where a lot of those students are right now, but at that moment in time, they were enthralled with the performance, with the pe- being able to meet someone and finding out, you know, they're real. And um, that's what motivates me to get out of, of bed in the morning, to be able to expose children to the arts in many ways. I think it makes us a kinder, gentler society. That's my own personal opinion, because we're, we're looking outside ourselves. Mary Cummings, our guest here. Mary, a moment as I break in uh, for some uh, uh, news that I was just informed of. Rob Blair has been unanimously selected by the Berkeley County Board of County Commissioners as the new sheriff of Berkeley County. That post is now filled with Rob Blair, And uh, that was just uh, decided this morning in a meeting. I was just given that information to pass along to everybody. Uh, Mary, a couple of suggestions in our Facebook commenting community uh, this morning. One is to develop some type of speaker series like they do at the Weinberg. Uh, You mentioned the Maryland Theater a moment ago. I remember seeing George Carlin at the Maryland Theater uh, back in the (laughs) 1990s. Uh, And I've seen shows at the Weinberg as well. The question is, is the Apollo in such a physical state that we can't host those types of acts here in Martinsburg? Is that what the renovation will hopefully take care of? Or could we actually host those kind of shows right now? We can host those shows right now. We're always looking to improve and and make things more comfortable. So that's, that's what the renovations are going to do. Um, that You know, that building is a historic landmark. And so anything that's been around for a long time needs some upkeep and, and that and tender loving care and that's what we're looking to do. But there there are some great performances already scheduled for this season. I encourage your listeners to visit the website, the Apollotheater.org, to see what's coming up and to look for the future and to see what new um, opportunities are gonna be coming up on the horizon for the Apollo. Have you gotten the marquee yet, or is that uh, still to be uh, installed? It's still to be installed. It isn't up yet, but it is in the works. How close are you? Do you know? I do not know. Right, well, that's close, uh, that's going to be nice when it gets in, installed there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to working with um, you folks and maybe creating some town hall meetings and these these. Comments by your listeners are very helpful. I really encourage those because I, my personal passion would be to have community involvement in, in the future of the Apollo. Is Aubrey still with you folks? I'm not sure. I haven't met. I haven't met everybody yet? Um, okay. No, I haven't. There's a lot of the staff that I have not met. Um, I just had one board meeting and then a couple executive committee meetings, so I have it. My meeting with the staff is next week. Okay. Do you uh, plan to keep the Youth Summer Theater at the Apollo program? Absolutely. Absolutely. It was. I did get to attend one of those meetings and to see the children and their excitement to be part of the summer workshop series, and there's some things going on right now, is, is, is thrilling, and it thrills my heart. So I think we have a really good foundation and for me to build upon. Any final thoughts, Mary? Appreciation. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to the community. I really appreciate what you guys are doing, and, and supporting local arts is is a very positive and encouraging sign for me as a newcomer. Thank you. Very good. Mary, thanks so much for joining us today.